This lecture is going to be about the hydrostatic equation. And if you'll notice, the word hydrostatic can be broken into two parts. The hydro, meaning fluid, and static, meaning not moving. And so I'll translate this into the not moving uh, fluid equation. And what it really refers to is the fact that the air uh, in the atmosphere, despite the fact that there are regions of vertical motion, upward vertical motion, and downward vertical motion, that when you average over the entire planet, the average net vertical velocity is zero. And that's a good thing, because if, if, if the vertical velocity were even a little bit positive over the entire planet, the atmosphere would simply lift off the surface and we'd all be left trying to breathe. So it's a fundamental thing that we enjoy, that we are able to breathe because of the hydrostatic equation. <clears throat> and the hydrostatic equation is, de is derived from a force balance. So if you think back to physics one, the net force on an object is equal to the sum of all of the individual forces. And if we start dealing with an air parcel, uh, in this case the shape of a slab, uh, there are two forces that are acting on this slab. We have the upward force of the pressure gradient force and the downward force of the gravity. And those two forces are going to be balanced, which is going to keep our air parcel static in the vertical direction. So let's take a look at the downward force of gravity first. Um, so you might recall that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And in this case, the acceleration is due to gravity, which is uh, approximately 9.81 meters per second squared. <clears throat> but we can translate the mass of this air parcel uh, into something that can be derived mathematically. Um, so if we look at some cross-sectional area A, which is simply the uh, horizontal width times the length, uh, times the uh, depth of this air parcel, dz. Um, we know that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, and the volume of this little slab is just simply the cross-sectional area times the depth. So the mass total is density times the cross-sectional area times the depth. And so putting that together, we get the downward force of gravity is equal to the density of our air parcel times the cross-sectional area times the force of gravity times the depth of that air parcel. <coughs> um, but in contrast, the upward directed force of gravity um, is due to the pressure gradient force, which is simply due to the fact that the pressure at the bottom of this layer is less than, is greater than the pressure at the top of the layer because pressure decreases exponentially with height. <coughs> and so, if you recall that pressure is force per unit area. If we want to get the pressure gradient force, then we need to multiply that pressure by the area over which it's acting. <clears throat> so for this particular air parcel, the upward directed force at the bottom of the air parcel is the pressure times the cross-sectional area. And the upward directed and the pressure gradient force at the top of that layer is the pressure minus a small increment in pressure dp times the cross-sectional area. And if you take the difference of those two forces at the top and bottom of the layer, then you'll get the upward directed pressure gradient force. So you have the force at the bottom, the force at the top, you subtract those, and mathematically you'll come up with the cross-sectional area times the dp, which is the change in pressure from the top to the bottom of the layer. The hydrostatic assumption, as I said at the beginning, assumes that the net force is equal to zero. So if we have the downward directed force plus the upward directed force um, is going to be equal to zero, then we can substitute in from these intermediaries. Um, so for the downward directed force, density times the cross-sectional area times gravity times dz, and then minus the upward directed pressure gradient force of the area, cross-sectional area times dp equal to zero. You can rearrange this equation for dp by dz. So we're looking at how pressure is changing with height. And for a hydrostatic atmosphere, the pressure will change height um, is a constant, in this case, uh, minus the density of this air parcel times gravity. 
And this equation is extremely useful and we will be using it in many different uh, other equations as we move along. But this is known as the hydrostatic equation.